Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of our Medical Minute podcast series from our new dedicated studio in, um, in our new offices in beautiful downtown Norwood. Um, we had a great time with Tim Schroeder on the previous three episodes talking about clinical trials. So if, uh, if you haven't had a chance to, to look at those, please go back and, and see those. I mean, as someone who's been um, in the CRO space for years, I can't even tell you how much I learned, a lot. And so um, Tim was full of information, and, um, and as Jill would attest, um, clinical trials hold just unlimited promise for the future for cancer care. So um, please give those a look when you get a chance. Um, anyway, so for the next two episodes, we're going to talk about, um, and I, I never know exactly how to use the term, but precision oncology, precision medicine, molecular medicine, whatever we want to call it. But anyway, it's that. Um, so the, that represents kind of revolutionary uh, steps forward in early detection. And so I think maybe what I'll do at this point is maybe, Jill, can, what is the right term? I mean, is there, do any of those work? Are they synonymous? or All of them work, and okay. all of them are right. And um, you also will hear terms like personalized medicine. Essentially, what all of those terms collectively mean is it's a personalized approach to someone's individual tumor and cancer. Um, it's not putting everybody in little compartments and blanket treating a disease. Got it. Yep. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So I don't know if people will remember or not. Hopefully they watched episode 10 where I kicked off my journey as a human pincushion um, that will continue over the next couple of episodes. But in that episode, uh, Jill took my blood for something called a Garden 360, which is a, a liquid biopsy. And at the time we explained it, but Jill, um, if you could just do... Five, 10 seconds, 15 seconds maybe on what a liquid biopsy is, um, why it's maybe not better than a tissue biopsy, but how it differs and, and why that's good for people going forward as well. So a liquid biopsy is a um, way to measure what's called a um, cell-free circulating tumor DNA that's in the bloodstream. Um, the tumors themselves, they they shed little pieces of them th themselves during um, different parts of cell division. And when that happens, parts of that can, can circulate through the bloodstream and through um, some pretty amazing advances in science. They've been able to extract that from the blood and test it specifically for certain mutations that are specific to your cancer. Okay. Um, the way that that differs, obviously, from a standard tissue biopsy. A standard tissue biopsy, you are going into the tumor itself and, and removing a chunk of that tissue and then sending it the traditional method to the pathologist and their reading and doing the stains and different testing on the tumor. And why it's the advances have been made and, and why this is such a great addition to cancer care is that, number one, it gives you a great method of surveillance while patients are going through treatment. You know, it, it gives you a way to early detect when things are starting to change. Um, it also, for patients who might not be a candidate for a tissue biopsy, sometimes lung cancer patients are diagnosed by um, not necessarily a tissue diagnosis, but because they've like had fluid removed from their lung and yep. they've picked up the cancer cells and diagnosed it, but not actually had tissue. If the patients are older, they're on blood thinners, they have multiple other issues that would not be a great candidate for them to be sedated for a biopsy or the biopsy itself is a risk for complications, then this offers another way of looking for some of those mutations that offer treatment options. Yep. And that's what I remember. That's what stuck with me when you went through it the first time as someone that's had uh, several of these and been around the space for a while. But when you it, what really resonated with me was when you said that that they go in and they get the tissue. But what they're really looking for within the tissue is also what's excreted kind of excreted into the blood by way of cancer cells DNA right. so they can find the same thing in the blood right um, and that was something I really had never heard it explained that way before which I thought was really helpful so um, so anyway so now we'll maybe we'll get into the result that we actually got back on mine yes. um, which was different than um, the two before so maybe if you want right. to cover what 
I got in the previous two results and what we're seeing now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So there are multiple different um, liquid biopsies. The one that we sent on Steve, um, as he had previously mentioned, was a Garden 360. Um, the nice thing about the report that comes from Garden is that not only do you get your most recent results, but they also graph out your, your previous results. And so I know at a glance quickly um, exactly when you had your previous testing done, what those results were, and then what the changes are. So um, going on his most recent um, report, I can tell you that on June 10th of 2020, Steve had a Garden 360 drawn. And at that point, there was um, no detected um, alterations at that point. Yep. The test was then again drawn on November 19th of 2020. And again, at that point, we had no detected alterations. Um, when we rechecked and we drew, um, when I had the pleasure <laughs> of drawing your blood on December 22nd with a very nice needle. <laughs> um, we, at that point, did pick up a 0.2% alteration. Um, and the nice thing about the report is that not only does it give you the, the specific quantitative measurement, but then it also gives you what mutation or alteration was picked yeah. up. And um, so on Steve's, we were able to pick up a TP53V216L um, variation. And although um, when you are looking at those results, um, there is not a specific treatment that is associated with that alteration. Um, but what it does tell us, and you know, it's funny because you know, I think the first couple test results that you got, you had told me that the report was only like four pages long. Yeah. This most recent one is 12. Um, so it gives you a lot more information once you start picking up those alterations. And that um, TP53 variation um, can be found in multiple different types of cancer. It's not specific to just prostate. Okay. 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 All right. So then uh, let's just say that I am a patient of Cincinnati Cancer Advisors, which I am. And I'm also an employee of Cincinnati Cancer Advisors. Um, Are you? Well, uh, some might say. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, what? Um, so this report comes back. You guys see it. First of all, you know it's different than before. Secondly, you've got, it's got something that's clinically significant, if not right. huge, but something clinically significant. So, what does Cincinnati Cancer Advisors advise that I do at this point? So, as we had talked about before, when we were actually talking about drawing this on the episode that we drew it, um, this is another data point. And so um, we had your serial PSAs up until that point, and that was enough to raise the question of, hey, we need to get a little better look and see if we've got anything else that can point us into the direction of, of what's going on here. Um, the Garden 360 was, was part one of that. And, and what this is telling us is that we're definitely seeing a correlation in the fact that your PSA is rising, and now we're also getting a measurable alteration um, on the cell-free tumor DNA. Okay? okay. okay. So th they match is what yep. that tells us. Yep. Um, and then the other thing that we had talked about in episode 10 um, was to update your PSMA scan mm -hmm. um, because we had done that also previously. It identified some lymph nodes that were problematic and you had had some targeted radiation therapy Correct. to treat those very early on. Yep. Um, so now we're in the process of gathering all of the data on and, and essentially establishing a new baseline for exactly what your disease is doing. And so the next step will be to get that PSMA scan. And, you know, like we had talked, you are going to get to make that lovely trek back up to um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, yeah. um, in all of their beautiful weather. Well, I have in, to go see in it in summertime. I, I don't know. I, I only get, get, only get to go there in winter, it seems. Yeah. I, I'm thinking in the summertime, <laughs> I, I could think of better places to go. <laughs> no slam oh, on Ann Arbor. No oh, slam no, no, on no. Michigan. I well, just, at least the, OS, so cold up there. the OSU people will love you for that comment, for whatever yes, that's worth. But yes. anyway. Um, okay. So, um, so to kind of sum up then, so, um, so these types of tests are, uh, I don't know, I don't want to overstate the case, but 
really almost invaluable if if you in terms of finding things early, right? right? So because it's not that invasive to get a blood test, and mm-hmm. so um, and, so and you pretty much get blood tests drawn just about every time that you yeah, you visit yeah. your oncologist. Exactly. The other piece that I did want to specifically speak to, and you had asked, you know, what would Cincinnati Cancer Advisors do? Um, the other piece that I, I did kind of leave out is the fact that we have been in close contact with your entire treatment team. Yep. So you're, you're treating, um, radiation oncologist. We, you know, when you had the elevated PSAs, they, they called and were like, okay, wh- what are we going to do with this situation? And, you know, th- they already had an idea and we all just kind of collaborated on what your best next steps were. Yep. Um, so I, I don't want to paint a picture that, you know, that we, we ordered and, and sent you off and, and that we, it was a collaborative, um, approach with the entire treatment team yep. and your treating oncologist was, was the spearhead for all of it. Okay. Yeah. And as I've told you before, you've heard me say it before, but that's one of the things I love about what we do is it's not, I, the catchphrase I've used before is it's not a visit. It's a, it's a relationship. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the way we, we treat it. So, okay. So then I'm going to head on uh, up to Ann Arbor, Michigan and get this test done. And then we'll, um, next week we'll have those results back and mm-hmm. then we can cover those and, um, we'll go for there. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we're really enjoying doing this. It's an important service. So please, uh, like and share and please, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, cause we'll have a whole lot of, uh, interesting content to come and, uh, I don't, you know, I'm biased, but I would say life-saving content to come. So Absolutely. anyway, thanks everybody. And we'll see you uh, next week.